So uh, as for the introduction, um, my name is Aaron Gale, uh, and I'm running Big ID outside of the Americas. Um, and in the context of data loss prevention, to give you a little bit of background on me, um, uh, essentially I've been working in the security industry for the last 20 years or so, uh, and I was working at Symantec when they acquired uh, Von2, the market leader for DLP at that time. Um, and I had uh, a great deal of, uh, of success with um, working with customers on data loss prevention projects. So a great deal of experience with some very large customers. Um, and uh, today we're going to talk about how to enrich and extend data loss prevention. So uh, as for the data loss prevention uh, the levels with the big ID. Um, and so here's an in exploring how the DLP side works, you have typically um, three phases. You have the discovery uh, of the data um, and you look for data in the environment and you run scans to discover the data and then uh, specifically classify the data in terms of its sensitivity. Then you have a monitor element which uh, is utilized to, um, uh, to, to observe how that data is being used in the environment, how that data is uh, being consumed and moved, and and, and so on, uh, in order to uh, in order to ensure that the risk posture of the organisation is uh, is being maintained. And then you have the protect element, and this is the element really where. Um, most organizations would love to get to, but candidly, um, most organizations never really quite get there. Um, and uh, essentially, the, the, uh, the reason that they don't quite get to this position where you have this um, enforcement side is primarily to do with the rate of false positive and false negatives. Um, and uh, it, the, this, this really um, drives the burden at the bottom of this slide on the management. And so um, there is a significant amount of uh, tuning uh, of these types of tools in the environment. Um, and primarily, it comes down really to the ultimately the accuracy of the discovery um, and the, 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 the constant need to refine and tune uh, the discovery side of things and the classification of that data to ensure that the optimal uh, risk posture of the organization is maintained through the monitor and ideally through the prevent, although, as we've discussed, very few organizations really get to the prevent piece. So let's think about why they, um, uh, they don't quite get there. So among the top six reasons you'll see here for, um, uh, shall we say, underwhelmed, uh, underwhelming results from DLP implementations, um, it's, it's the ineffective data classification methods. Right? So um, think about that. So um, how to accurately identify the sensitivity of the data in your environment that is unique to your environment. Okay, so how are you going to uh, have a, a capability to really uh, zone in onto the data that is most critical to you? And you'll see here the excessive false positives, okay, um, as well as the false negatives that, um, that we've talked about. And so with excessive false positives, this creates a huge management overhead. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple more examples here. So uh, um, among the top mistakes to avoid, um, uh, this is from uh, the Digital Guardian blog, um, you'll see that the lack of a data inventory before integrating a DLP system into the IT environment is cited as one of these uh, errors that organisations make, assuming the DLP tool will be in a position to, um, uh, to, to, to provide that data inventory. But the challenge fundamentally is that a lot of these DLP tools uh, utilize a discovery strategy, which is a, uh, a highly legacy uh, strategy of pattern matching using regular expressions. And these, this pattern matching um, activity um, has, has been clearly demonstrated over many years to be um, a, at best, 50 or 60% um, uh, accurate. 
And so if you think about all of the data to be discovered in your environment, you think about all the scenarios where that data is being consumed, and you think about um, the, all of the potential for triggering uh, on, on um, sensitive data with a 40 or 50% inaccuracy, the, this, is, this is really the fundamental reason why DLP solutions um, uh, really fail to live up to this, uh, to this expectation on, on trying to achieve this enforcement piece. So this is really where a big ID can fill that gap, solve that particular challenge, and then really accelerate value from DLP implementations and really get organizations to the, uh, to the goal that they have on the enforcement side. So just introducing big ID momentarily. Uh, so we're very focused on key business outcomes. Um, uh, at its core, Big ID is a data discovery tool. And um, you can see that we align with uh, a number of um, uh, a, a number of regulatory frameworks. We're a very horizontal technology in that we're servicing a very wide range of uh, uh, industry sectors, um, really any industry sector with sensitive data pretty much everything. Uh, but we are focused on the business outcomes. And uh, if you know your data, which is the big ID strap line, if you know your data, then you can drive uh, a number of uh, business outcomes like compliance, uh, like building customer trust, um, uh, make the right data available to the right data citizens to drive business innovation, um, ensure that uh, the data is current and relevant, um, and that your business intelligence is not being poisoned by out-of-date data, but also primarily about reducing risk. And this is really where a lot of the security tools, um, in terms of those that provide friction, um, or compensating controls um, uh, aim to reduce the risk that an organization is carrying associated with the data assets. And this is where Big ID plays a, a strong role. So to introduce Big ID, essentially as a data discovery engine, uh, we are um, able to discover data across an industry leading array of data sources. So uh, we're talking about structured and unstructured and semi-structured data sources. We're talking about things as diverse as mainframes, SaaS applications, um, uh, infrastructure as a service. If you're utilizing um, Azure or AWS or a GCP stacks um, and uh, um, uh, pipelines like Kafka and Kinesis and so on, um, Big ID is able to interrogate those data sources and find data. But what, what sets Big ID apart from the engines that are included with the DLP tools is that um, uh, whilst we do employ some regular expressions where we can get the appropriate amount of fidelity, um, in general, we are employing cutting edge mathematical um, methodology in order to try and find uh, data. And so uh, if you look at data classification, the second one on this list, then um, in data classification, we are employing some regexes, regular expressions, uh, classifiers. But actually, we've created our own deep learning neural network mathematical model utilizing natural language, language processing, which we call named entity recognition, which allows us to search on things that you would never be able to uh, pattern match on before. Things like people's names, things like um, uh, addresses, dates, customer numbers, these, these kind of things where um, it would have been extremely difficult to, to, to do that historically. We're also able to um, uh, uh, pattern match against entire documents. So if you have a specific type of document in your environment which is sensitive, then you can actually train this classification engine to look for those types of documents. Um, uh, it's, it's incredibly powerful, but we, we don't stop there. We have cluster analysis as well, which allows us to look for data that is similar. And this is really, really important in this use case around DLP. So we can look for things, for example, let's say uh, everyone on this call has a different uh, curriculum vita, a different CV, and yet all those CVs are similar. They all share similar characteristics. They all share your name, your address, your um, employment history, your business certifications, your hobbies and interests. And yet they're completely unique to the individual. And yet, however, they are 
all similar documents. And from a security perspective, you would want them to be treated similarly in the context of sensitivity and in the context of the BLP tool. And so cluster analysis um, is using, uh, it's employing fuzzy mathematics to drive this uh, analysis of similarity. And then it allows organizations then to be able to take uh, group actions on data that is similar. Uh, correlation is also extremely powerful. And this is a way in which Big ID is able to understand the context and relationships between data. This employs graph theory mathematics and allows us to build a view of all uh, uh, data attributes and da um, uh, data elements that relate to a unique identifier. Typically, that unique identifier is a customer number or a um, um, an email address or a stock keeping unit um, or a patent number. Um, so some sort of unique identifier. And we're able to map all of the data in the estate back to that unique identifier. And we present all these results through a data registry, which we call catalog. And uh, within the catalog, we aggregate the business operational and technical metadata that we've discovered with regard to the data. And we are able then to play a pivotal role in cataloging processes, uh, with processes within data governance programs. Um, uh, but also we are able to um, uh, add business specific uh, context within the catalog, which is then extremely powerful for a wide variety of use cases and understanding the context of data. So you can think of these as different lenses into, into data provided by Big ID through a single unified uh, capability across the widest possible data sources feeding that can then be used to feed into the, uh, the DLP tool for the purposes of uh, enforcement. So how do we actually, uh, uh, how do we do that? And so the way that we do that, you'll see the same foundation at the bottom. You'll see this, this wide range of data sources that we cover here. You'll see these strategies for finding the data, employing the mathematics. And then you'll see that we have on top an application framework with a wide variety of applications which service specific business use cases based upon the discovered data. And we have privacy use cases, we have um, security use cases and data governance use cases. Within the security use cases, or what we call data protection apps, we have a data labeling app. And that data labeling app, you'll actually notice, comes as part of Big ID's core value proposition, with the, along with the core discovery foundation. And it's the data labeling app, which we then um, can use in order to drive uh, effective labeling of the files across the estate and then um, the DLP engine can consume those labels uh, in order to drive accurate uh, enforcement of the, um, of the rules associated with data loss. So here is uh, um, uh, the example of the labeling app within Big ID. Um, so essentially in this example, you can see that we have consumed the, um, the labeling framework from MIP, which is confidential, highly sensitive and sensitive. And then we are uh, able then to apply that based upon policy through, um, um, through the integration onto the uh, files based upon what Big ID has discovered. Um, it's really uh, it's, it's really a compelling deliverable in the context that you have um, the industry leading discovery and classification tool with Big ID interfacing with uh, um, uh, the, the the labeling tool which most organisations have entitlement to under their Microsoft uh, relationship and uh, in combination with one another then driving the optimal output from the tools that you've invested in in your security stack. A uh, really, really nice deliverable. So to give you a feel for our coverage, you know, very, very wide coverage. And um, uh, this is just a, an indicative sample of the types of data uh, sources which we can interrogate. Um, uh, and to give you a feel for the kind of uh, scalability which we're able to offer, uh, one of our customers is actually the world's largest consumer of box. And they have six petabytes of unstructured data in box, which we're able to uh, assist with the discovery against and then 
um, through the integration with AIP, then drive the labeling of, of that um, unstructured data repository. Really, really highly scalable uh, capability from, from Big ID. Thank you, Darren, for the overview on how Big ID's labeling capability can be used to complement DLP solutions for better enforcement of data protection policies. Hello, everyone. My name is Kamfei, and I will now take you through a short demonstration of how Big ID's labeling app can help automate the labeling of documents via the Microsoft Information Protection Framework, or MIP, for short. In front of you, you can see the Big ID UI that gives you an overview of our demo environment for today. We have 17 data sources that have findings out of the 19 that we've connected to. We have discovered 94 different attributes and correlated that back to about 160,000 entities or users typically. In our demo environment, we've connected to a wide range of data sources, right? 19 of them, as you saw a little bit earlier, including structured data sources like databases, unstructured data like Snowflake, SharePoint Online, and even data in motion. For today's demo, we're going to focus on the SharePoint Online data source, as you can see here. And we're going to take a look at the SharePoint site, what it looks like. You can see some of the files here. It's a series of Excel spreadsheets and Word documents. We're going to come back to this a little bit later, but for now, let's go back to the Big ID UI. The Big ID labeling app has been configured to connect to an instance of the MIP framework, and we have imported the labels defined in the MIP framework into Big ID. You can see the labels here. It could be confidential, it could be general, right? public, restricted, anything that's been defined by the administrators in MIP, we will import them in for mapping purposes. Now switching to the catalog view in Big ID and filtering by the SharePoint online site that we are using for our demo today, you can see that there are about 23 files similar to what you saw a little bit earlier on the SharePoint site, consisting of Excel spreadsheets, Word documents, etc. And you can click on any of the files to see what Big ID has discovered in those files. In this case, for Bank Transfer 2, we've been able to discover a citizen ID, a string that matches citizen ID, and we've categorized that as a PII and a restricted attribute. Similarly, we found a Swift code that matches one of the China's bank Swift, Swift codes, and we've categorized that as financial data. And you can do that for other documents as well, like Bank Transfer 3. In this case, we only found Swift codes, but nothing related to PII. Okay, of course, you can filter the attributes by anything that you want. Okay, we could be looking for full name and we could be looking for credit card numbers, right? Anything that you expect or maybe don't expect to find in those documents, right? And you can actually filter through tags like risk levels. We have high risk files. We can click on those and see which files fall into the high risk category as defined through our policies or queries. All right, there are two files here. And let's take a look at those that are medium category. You'll find that maybe there's only one or two. Oh, there's one, bank transfer three. All right, and the key difference you will see a little bit later is in the attributes or the type of attributes that are con uh, contained in those files. We saw a little bit earlier in bank transfer three, there were only financial data like a Swift code. And in our context, we've defined that as, as a medium risk because it has some financial data, but it cannot be correlated back to an individual. Whereas for two of those files, transfer one and two, they contain both financial and PII data. 